All right, everyone, we're going to try this one more time. I very much apologize for my mic and technical issues, but this is a live version of Hunch's Weather. We're going to talk about the national pattern, which is taking a big time change. And as we head into the month, I talked in an earlier video about a very active stream of weather taking place across the lower 48. That is definitely going to continue. And it looks like it could bring some significant snow making systems to both coasts and a very Arctic air mass working its way over the nation's midsection. Here is a look at the model. This is an American model, by the way, and I just want to put the caveat out there that these American models, ah, well, they can definitely get, uh, well, the farther out in time we get, just the less confidence we have in them. But they have been showing, this model has been showing a very active pattern for the West Coast. Storms working their way out of the West Coast move into the Rockies, usually the Central and Southern Rockies, and then move out to the Gulf Coast states and either taking a track toward the Great Lakes or the central uh, Atlantic coast. And that is going to bring a wave of wintry weather for both coasts as systems making landfall in the Pacific Northwest just keep coming and they reformulate out in the Rockies in many cases. So let's talk about the storm system that's working its way into the region this weekend as we have a host of winter weather advisories and winter weather warnings with regards to these particular systems. Here's what you need to know. We have watches and warnings from coast to coast with the systems that are working their way in. And this weekend, as a matter of fact, the first full weekend in the month of January, we are going to absolutely be seeing some active weather on both coasts. A system that is right now exiting through the Mississippi River Valley will head up the Atlantic seaboard as a nor'easter, bringing heavy rains, thunderstorms even in the south. And then as we go up into the mid-Atlantic states, we'll start seeing that mingle with freezing rain and ice and very heavy snow. Here's a look at the active watches, warnings, and advisories that we have in effect right now across the nation. I must tell you, things are looking very active no matter where you are. Let's take a look. Here we go. Uh, first and foremost, the colors that you'll be seeing on this are indicative of the, uh, the alerts, and I'll kind of walk you through, but essentially as we head into the weekend, the pink you see on the East Coast from basically Charlotte and the North Carolina mountains right up through Roanoke and the Virginias all the way into to the nation's capital, not far, just off to the west of you. As we move up into central PA, there's going to be a chance for some very heavy snow. So the pink area's winter storm warnings. This extends all the way up into upstate New York. Look at this. So we head into the New York City area. You're just out of range of this system. But our neighbors up in Boston, likewise, stormy weather there. And we have a winter storm watch for all these counties that you see highlighted in, in yellow. So pay attention to your local National Weather Service office. They'll keep you up to date with the latest as this system right here in Jackson, Mississippi and Mobile, Alabama will be working its way to the north and to the east and producing all this snow. Meanwhile, check out what's happening right now. This storm system is actively producing snow in Manhattan, Kansas, working its way towards Kansas City and St. Joe, Missouri. And as it does so, it's bringing a band of wintry weather. We have another system that's developing in the next 24 hours that has, well, winter storm watches from Dodge City, Kansas, all the way through Lincoln, Nebraska, and look at the West Coast. Oh, the mountains of California getting ready for another round, as are the mountains in Oregon, all the way up into the Pacific Northwest. And that's just for this weekend alone. So, Right now, we have active weather in the northern plains, and that's going to lead to a chance for some, well, healthy snow amounts. Let's take a look at a couple of different models, and this is what meteorologists across the country deal with every day in making their forecasts. We're going to start with the European model as we look over the next few days. And we'll go ahead and take this model, and we'll go ahead and put it into motion for you. Not paying too much particular attention to all of the details on the, on the time here, but as we go through, watch the storm systems work their way from the coast of the Gulf, and there's the storm system this weekend on the east coast, working its way through places like Maine and off the Boston shore and off of Cape Cod as we head into the day uh, on Sunday night and into Monday. Now, as you look at the Rocky Mountains, the next wave is making its way in. That system will work its way off into the central plains, and this one will bring another round of snow that we'll be keeping our eyes on as we start the work week on Monday. Look at all of the showers of heavy rain and thunderstorms in the southeast from that wave. And yet another storm makes landfall in the Pacific Northwest. This one, 
says the European model, will take more of a northerly track initially as it works its way through. Wave after wave after wave carries us all the way into the middle of the month. And that's the main point. Now, when we take a look at the first system snowfall potential with regards to the European model here for both coasts, let's just get through the first one because our confidence will be a little more high with regards to the first one. So as we go through Sunday, boy, look at all of the snowfall potential you see along the Pacific Northwest with the wave making its way on there. Moist air off the Pacific Ocean gets wrung out in the mountains of the Cascades, Snoqualmie Pass, and into the mountains of California, where we'll see anywhere from three inches of snow to upwards of a foot in many places. How about well, the populous areas from the Virginias, where we start seeing the hilly country, we'll have three to six inches of snow in those areas in all likelihood. But enhanced snow totals through central PA on into upstate New York from this system. And where we see the deeper purple colors, we have the potential for numerous areas picking up four to eight inches of snow, along with some very significant wind with that. So that is a look at that. Now let's take a look at the American model with regards to this particular system. Here we go. And also the trend over the next several days. And it's very interesting to take a look at both of these models and then compare on the outer ends. Are they agreeing? Well, here's the first way, the first storm. Well, pretty close track. It looks like Boston would be more in line for snow on the American model. Here comes wave two, central plains, southern plains, great lakes. Yep, that looks a lot like the European model. Wave three moves through the northern plains as a clipper. And here comes another wave working its way through the southern Rockies. This one taking the track right toward the Great Lakes region and the east coast. So the active pattern is persistent in both of these models. Now, as we switch this over to a look at winter weather and snow, taking a look at only the first wave of snow because it's the only one that we have in the shorter range that we can still keep some confidence in. Check this out. The model guidance suggests that by the time we get to Sunday night, okay, as the storm is exiting into the Atlantic south of Maine, that's a pretty close representation of where the warnings are. And the snowfall amounts are very similar to those expected by the European model. And as meteorologists, when you see agreement between the models, it just increases our confidence that the models are onto something. Similarly, in the Rocky Mountains of Cascades, we also have snow that is expected to be into that four to six inch range for many, but you get into the elevated terrain of the Cascades, Snoqualmie Pass, the mountains of Western uh, Oregon it looks like we could have some areas of very deep snow. How about northern reaches of Idaho and not far from Glacier picking up some snow as well as the Colorado Rockies and the desert southwest elevated terrain in Arizona and New Mexico standing to see by the end of the weekend some additional snowfall potential. So this is what we know. We'll have some big time changes as we go through the next uh, weekend. And then after that, it looks like a very active pattern for the entire nation. And here where I am, Hutch's weather, located in the northern plains, there's going to be an Arctic air mass that settles in. And one of the reasons why the models are steering everything around our area and down into the central plains and southern plains is simply the fact that we'll have a very cold Arctic air mass in place that's hard to move. It's hard to budge. Isn't a lot of moisture in these air masses that park over us this time of the year. So it looks like it's going to be cold, but not necessarily snowy. If this helped you in any way, please give my uh, videos here a like. I appreciate that. I'd love to have you follow me on Hutch's Weather or Hutch'sWeather.com. I'll keep you posted right here. Again, if you know a little about me, I am a meteorologist who's been on the air for 26 years. And, well, well I was in research meteorology before that and spent... Uh, well, the better part of 20 years teaching college level meteorology classes. So while you get information from a lot of sources on the internet, I wanted to put a little bit of a scientific spin on why we choose one model or the other and what we don't know about these systems on our very active January pattern. There's confidence in an active January pattern. There's confidence in the coasts being more active than the Northern Plains. And it looks very likely that some of the nation's coldest air of the season thus far with lows as we get into the middle of the month of January that will be in the teens and 20s below zero for the Northern Plains. And it could stick around for the better part of the month. 
Meteorologist Hutch Johnson, have a wonderful weekend and make sure you're paying attention to your local watches, warnings, and advisories. Travelers, give yourself extra time on both sides. There's going to be very disrupt, uh, disruptive weather for travel of all varieties along both coasts as we go through the weekend ahead.